you're never going to see it from a satellite. In situ methods and differences, and then outputs and so forth. And um, one final comment on validation. We've or just to remind you, I'm reverting back to HPLC here. All authors acknowledge, and this is if you were to read the papers in every single discussion, all the authors say I have to use HPLC because it's what's available, but I would prefer another method. Those data just aren't simply there. And the rationale for using HPLC is it's abundant. And this is just, I mean, when I say abundant, I mean this. There are still large parts of the ocean we're not seeing. And this is what, uh, I should have jumped ahead, but this is along the lines of what Colin and Mary Jane were saying. Using HPLC has weaknesses because, you know, various phytoplankton groups share some pigments. Phytoplankton groups encompass wide size range. We can't prescribe diatoms to one. And you need some uh, a priori knowledge of accessory pigment ratios. Getting to validation, most of these algorithms are validated by visual inspection. So I showed you maps. A lot of times, the author would just simply say, well, I know this is a productive area. My algorithm says there's a diatom there. Yay, verily, this algorithm is good. And that's all they do. Those who try to validate with field data um, have mixed success. That's hard because, again, relating what the satellite sees versus what you're seeing in the field is complicated because you're measuring, really measuring different things. Bob Bruin has a really nice paper, uh, if you want to get down into the stats of this, this is just an ad for that, where he compared all of these different algorithms, uh, kind of did a round robin, and showed the similarities and differences in their output. So some valid, this is not a validation of any particular method, it's a validation of the process at large. And then one more last ad for Ellie's work and Emmanuel's work in the TAR. I mentioned uh, in my previous talk that was kind of a ridiculous validation paper to put together using the flow through system. And I alluded to, we went so far as to say I can get phytoplankton PFTs from my flow through system. This is the best we could come up with. So, but it's still, you know, gets you in the right direction. Um, backscattering spectral slope, beam attenuation spectral slope versus the frequency of um, different size classes as determined by I think it might have been the uh, Julio Wheats algorithm. But the general trends seem to make sense as gamma decreases, the frequency of big particles increases. As gamma it increases, you can see more and more of the little guys. And so it's 11.30. I will end with that. Are there any final thoughts from anybody on this or any final questions? If not, then... My lecturing is done for the week, and I'm really sorry it's been all four days. Yeah. All right, then, those of you in charge, uh, decide what to do next. Yay. Thank you. I think, um,